follow the wood in your shop back far enough and you'll end up at a sawmill. Sawmills are more than just a place that cuts wood. They're a great place to buy wood too. And somehow, they manage to be in a beautiful part of the world. That's the Appalachian Trail running along behind the ridge at the Bailey Wood Products Sawmill near Kempton, Pennsylvania. 2,000 miles of trail from Maine to Georgia and Bailey's logs arrive in the valley below. A debarker grinds off the bark and the log travels on towards the saw. Traditional mills use a circular blade, six feet or so in diameter with replaceable teeth. But the Bailey Mill is a bandsaw mill with a cutting head that travels along the log. A six inch blade with teeth on both edges slices through the wood and when it reaches the end, the saw drops down by the thickness of a board and makes a cut on the return trip. The Bailey Mill has been in Jeff Shooker's family since 1928 when his great grandfather started cutting timbers for coal mines. It's state of the art now. These walnut flitches will eventually get used as countertops, tabletops, or freeform furniture. But first, they'll need to air dry, a year for every inch of thickness. Welcome to Haycock Lumber, a circular sawmill in Plumsteadville, Pennsylvania. The 58-inch blade in constant use dulls quickly, and the sawyer begins his day sharpening. By the time the day is over, you will have had to resharpen three times. Duval Denlinger co-owns the mill with his father-in-law, Dwayne Hunsberger. The smaller blade works in tandem with the larger blade to cut logs up to 20 inches wide. It takes about five minutes to turn a log like this into lumber. Poplar often has brown or green streaks running through it. Purple marks are the remnants of nails, buckshot, or any of the countless pieces of hardware that somehow end up in a tree. Denlinger sells most of his wood to larger companies that kiln dry it, but he air dries about 20 to 30 percent of what he cuts for local cabinet makers. He turns the lesser grades into lath, surveyor stakes, forms for pouring concrete, and fence posts, among other things. At Bailey's, sugar concentrates on kiln dried cabinet grade woods. Inside the kiln, the wood is stacked on strips of wood, called stickers, set between each layer so that air can get to every surface of every board. And after anywhere from one to three months, depending on thickness and species, the wood is finally dry. Some of it runs through a shaper to make floorboards. Some of it is turned into molding in countless profiles and species. And some of it is even set aside to make billets for turning baseball bats. But by far, most of it ends up in a woodshed, where it's measured with a lumber scaling rule, with markings that take thickness and length into account to measure board feet. The board footage is marked on the face, and the lumber is stacked and stacked and stacked. Quality? It has to be good for the mill to stay in business. Price? Cut out the middleman and save a few bucks. And selection? See for yourself. Most mills let you take a hands-on approach. <laughs>